In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to make this abstract render, which I'm calling fish eggs, because to me, they look like fish eggs. Anyways, let's get started. So in Blender, we're gonna do all of this in geometry nodes, so I guess let's hop into geometry nodes. We're gonna take the cube, make this a geo nodes group, and really what we wanna do is make a sphere, and on that sphere, there's gonna be a bunch of other spheres that follow a set of rules, and that's where it gets interesting. So we need a sphere. Uh, take the cube and replace it with a UV sphere. So again, this is going to be completely geo nodes. You can apply this to any object as a modifier and it's going to work. I'm going to take our sphere and make it higher res. So it just looks a bit cleaner. And if you want to, you can also make it set shade smooth. So it's shaded smoothly. Next, we need to distribute a bunch of points on our sphere, which will then follow a couple rules. To distribute points, we are going to distribute points on faces. I feel like we're going so fast. I feel that energy. Take that density, bring it up. And, you know, this could be fine uh, for most people, but we're not most people. I want this to be densely distributed, but I don't want points to necessarily overlap on top of each other. So instead of random, set this to Poisson disk. What this means is it's going to distribute points, but we can say have no two points be within, I don't know, 0.02 meters of each other. So we bring up the density. It's going to be hard to tell, but none of them are overlapping. It's easier to see when we increase this, but uh, none of them are overlapping. So I'm just going to use 5,000 as our density and maybe increase our spacing by a little, but not that much, somewhere in between. Okay, cool. So now it, or, it already looks like we have spheres on this, but these are just placeholders. Uh, for each of these points, we need a sphere that we're gonna have wiggle and some of them are gonna be big and some of them are gonna be small. So let's do that. Uh, we are going to instance, we are going to copy on points, on each of these points, a UV sphere. So we're gonna use another UV sphere node. Now you're gonna notice these are coming out quite big and uh, we'll fix that. Uh, but first, I want to make sure that these are distributed correctly. Make sure your normal is connected to rotation. This is going to make it so that each uh, sphere, each instance, is being oriented or pointed outwards, outwards from the sphere. So a point here will face this way. A point here will face that way. Okay? That's why this is important. It's using the normal coordinates. Um, either way, either way. Uh, when we take these and scale them down, you're going to notice, at least if you're very observant, you're going to notice an issue. So we have our spheres, they're oriented correctly, whatever. Um, if we take this and join it with our original mesh, you're going to see that these spheres are halfway intersecting. They're half poking in, half poking out. We don't want that. We want them to be touching at the sphere and then completely out, outside of it, right? Uh, this is because our original sphere is centered at the origin. So if we take it and transform it up by a unit, so again, its pivot point is now down here, and that's where the instancing is going to happen. Connect it, view it, and uh, now that issue is solved. It's hard to tell, but it is solved. Um, okay, cool. And now to make it look good, let's uh, scale not to a uniform thing, but we're going to randomize it. So random value is a great way uh, to add randomness to the scale from something like 0.04 to 0. Uh, this is one way uh, to get a random distribution. I'm actually going to show you a way that is much better and gives much cooler results. So instead, we're going to randomize between 0 and 1. And instead of just kind of clamping this to 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.03, I want a bit more control. So with the color ramp, I'm going to go from 0 to 0 0.03. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it with a color ramp. Although I'm going to move this handle a little over. I'm going to add a second handle and put it on the other side. And for this one, I'm going to say, make it big. So what I'm saying is for all the points that land to the right side of this handle, which is to say 7% of them, roughly, uh, make them big. And I think this is the reason I do this, by the way, instead of just using the random value, is it gives us mostly 0 to 0.03 distribution, but it gives us a couple kind of standouts, um, just so it kind of looks random, but with a bit more stuff going on. Um, I think it looks better. And let's have the minimum not be zero, but like 0 0.01, just so it looks fuller. Okay. So we have a bunch of spheres oriented correctly, scaled correctly. And now I want them to wiggle around and kind of have a bit of motion to them, uh, which is going to be hard to see in the render, but it does add a layer of detail. So rotate instances, you're going to notice when I rotate on the Z, Nothing happens because it's oriented on the Z-axis, if you think about it. 
Um, instead, if I rotate on the X, or if I rotate on the Y, uh, we get something a bit more interesting. Um, it might go into the sphere a bit, but I don't care. Um, so what I can do is I can actually animate this over time, but instead of just saying rotate on the X, all of them, I'm going to randomize it. I'm going to use a noise texture. So not every rotation is going to be the same. So the way you want to think about this is a noise texture for each input for each instance is going to give a number or a vector, really, and that's going to be our rotation. So you can see when we take this and wiggle it, look at that. Now they're all rotating on their own freely. You could have more group behavior by bringing down the scale up to you. And this makes sure that none of the rotations are too big. Uh, so the W slider, I'm going to connect it to seconds so that it's animating over time. And there you go. Now we have this. Um, at any point, you can change the seed and get a different distribution, whatever. Okay. I'm going to take this. I'm going to join it with our original sphere. And I'm going to save because we did not save. It's going to be called Patreon because that's where you can find the blend file. Um, okay. So we have our eggs. And maybe, maybe I'm going to bring down the spacing just a bit so we have more. Again, we can change this at any time. Uh, next order of business is we could either have that thing where they appear in some places and not in others, or we could do the shading. I'm thinking, mm, I'm thinking we do the thing where it appears in some places and not others, because that's the next uh, interesting thing. So right now they're being spawned everywhere. The trick is if you go to this density factor, which controls the density of the points, uh, you don't have to use the slider. In fact, we can plug in a field. Like let's say we were to plug in a, a noise texture. You could see we get variety. Uh, we can exploit this, not in a bad way, but we can use this uh, to get the kind of rotational effect. So here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use a geometry proximity node. This is gonna give us a distance output. This is what we care about. Uh, we're gonna put in some geometry and say, hey, uh, all these points, how far away are you? That's what this is gonna be used for. And then we're gonna connect it to the density. Uh, what are we going to use as our mesh? I'm going to use a mesh circle because this is a sphere and we can have the circle kind of sweep around it in some sense. So I'm going to compare to the circle and let's just plug this in and see what happens before we do anything. So let's uh, view that. Okay, uh, nothing's happening because right now it's evaluating the distance from faces. There are none, so let's set this to points. You can see what this is doing very, very roughly. It will be easier to see with a color ramp is it's keeping our distribution. That's, I'm make, making it a higher contrast. It's keeping our distribution, but it's getting rid of any points along the center circle, again, where this mesh circle is. Again, this is happening because we're evaluating the distance. Near here, the distance is going to be zero. The between points in the circle, they're very close. It's going to be zero, which means make the density zero. Have it not be there. And then, you know, uh, and then as it gets further away, the density goes up. We can also flip it so that it's only in the middle. That's up to you. What I'm thinking, though, is uh, if we take this and animate it. So, for example, I'm going to rotate it. You can see now we have this animated kind of growing thing, and you can rotate it on the y-axis. And you have to imagine the circles rotating, and that's affecting the proximity effect. What I want to do is have this uh, animation be procedural in the sense that I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis relative to time. And you can see um, it, it, it has some work that we need to do, but this is kind of the core essence of the effect. Um, another thing we can do is right now it kind of looks a bit too perfect. Like there's almost right here, there's this perfect band where it doesn't exist. Again, that's because our mesh circle, which is spinning, is kind of a perfect band. I'm thinking let's take that and break it up a bit. Add randomness to it, which will randomize our distance function. So I'm going to set position. Again, all of this is adding layers and layers of randomness. So I'm going to use a noise texture. You can see that uh, that breaks it up a bit. Uh, to get the offset to not happen, I'm not going to explain it here, but just subtract by 0.5. It's going to make sure that on average, well, here I go explaining it. It's going to make sure that on average, uh, with the offset on X, Y, and Z is 0.5. We're just undoing that by subtracting it. Either way, you can see now we have some randomization. And let's see what that looks like in the uh, network. So I'm going to do this. I'm also going to add a scale slider so we can control this. So when it's zero, this is what we have. Nothing's changed. 
but as we increase this, we're starting to get some uh, more variety and it's kind of bridging the gaps in some areas. Also, this uh, randomization of the circle can also be randomized. Look at that. So we're just randomizing every layer of the process here. Now, the W slider for this one uh, happens to be pretty sensitive, so I'm gonna animate it very slowly. And now you can see it's the same idea, like you can definitely see the rings, but it's more broken up. Another thing, and this is huge, to get this to look great is instead of just these, um, so it looks good, right? Uh, instead of these spheres just popping up relative to these rules, um, I want them to also scale, be like, if I'm close to being eliminated, like I'm on this border, I want it to get small and vice versa. If it's in this clump, it should be much bigger. Uh, we can also do that uh, because we already have a scaling function. Remember, um, where is it? Yes, the scaling function right here. Remember, we did that fancy color ramp trick. Uh, we can take this and just multiply it. What's multiplying? Multiplying is scaling, right? We can multiply it by the distance, the thing we care about. And you may or may not want to use the uh, color ramped version. We can play with both. Okay. Either way, you can see that uh, we might swap this, but you can see that it's getting bigger and smaller relative to this, so it looks much more organic and much more natural. Let's try the color ramped version. I predict that this version, yeah, th that's actually pretty clean. I like the look of that, so it looks more blobular. And just like I was saying before, with some of these being bigger, now that I know the final look, I'm gonna make them much bigger, like that. And you can see how that adds a lot of character. It's almost like, yes, these are the fish eggs that we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make it look like that, but it, it almost looks like some kind of fungus. And because all of this is basically uh, a function of the sphere, uh, there's no reason, again, we're using the circle as our distance thing, so you might wanna edit that, but there's no reason you can't use this on a cube or on any mesh. The effect is universal, okay? So I'm gonna say for now we're done with geometry nodes. You can of course play with this more, uh, but now let's get into the rendering side. Let's make it look interesting. E even with just cycles render, it already looks dope because of all the shadows. Uh, here is how I made the uh, material for the row. Uh, so first of all, I wanted a HDRI environment because it's gonna be very shiny and reflective and smooth. Um, so I picked an HDRI that I liked. Next, what I did is I made sure that I didn't see that. So I went to film transparent. Uh, next, what I did is for the things we're instancing, this UV sphere that we're transforming up, if you remember that whole thing, I'm going to I'm going to apply a material called this, such that, the reason we're doing this, such that whenever we play with this, let's call this one row, and you can see it updates here. Uh, whenever we do something here, it's going to affect only the spheres. Uh, so how do we make it look good? You make it orange, you make it transmissive, this is kind of the big one, and you make it shiny. Okay, um, if you want it to look a l less dark, the bigger it is, the darker it's gonna be because light needs to pass through it. By the way, uh, we're getting some facetting here. So I'm gonna set shade smooth on that so they're nice and smooth. If you don't like the darkness of it all, uh, you can actually have them emit light relative to a Fresnel function, which looks great, right? You use this as the emission strength, and then you pick an emission color that's roughly the same some kind of orangey, and you can pick the brightness of that. But I think this looks uh, super dope. And uh, just by changing a single parameter, the, the color, you can get different feels of this. Now it kind of looks like some kind of toxic waste thing. It's up to you, but uh, you can see how we built up this effect, the material and the lighting and all that, not too important. Of course, I took this, I put it in a basic scene uh, to make it look interesting. But that's the essence of it. That's how I made the effect. So I think we are done. How long did we go for? 15 minutes, nice and clean. Okay, uh, this is the end of the tutorial, but don't leave yet. I have an offer for you that you might actually find interesting. I mean it. So um, at the end of these tutorials, I always pimp out Patreon. Why? Because you get the blend file for this. So you, actually the original one, not necessarily the one I made in front of you, the one where I honed in the settings and everything. Uh, when you join Patreon, you get a bunch of benefits. There are 730, I think at the moment, active patrons. They get three things in return. They get early access to tutorials. You could have seen this tutorial a day or multiple days early. You didn't, but you could have. That's how some of these comments are left behind. You're like, oh, this was posted before the video was posted. Either way, 
Early access, blend files. I've uploaded blend files since 2019, okay? Multiple years, hundreds of blend files and project files you can download, including this. And uh, exclusive tutorials. I made two last month. I got to make some for the month of May. Um, those are only for patrons. So check that out. And in general, if you want to fund this channel and CG Matter, keep these tutorials free for everybody. That is the reason the, the active 730 patrons is why I can do it the way I'm doing it. So if you want to get those benefits or if you just want to support the tutorials I make, that is literally the most direct way to do it. I really appreciate it. Um, but I like to keep these at the end because, you know, it's it's like an ad. Okay. But thank you to the active patrons and link in the description if this is interesting to you. And other than that, that is my time and I'll see you.